Hello everyone, it's Know Your Mac on YouTube.com, and in this video I wanted to address ScreenFlow 3.0, which is the latest version of ScreenFlow. And if you've ever messed around with any uh, screencasting tools on your Mac, you'll pretty much know that ScreenFlow is basically the way to go. The only other contender that could possibly be a match for ScreenFlow would be iShow UHD. But uh, honestly, ScreenFlow is where it's at for me, and uh, it has tons of other customers that will say the same. And uh, with the new release of ScreenFlow 3, everyone was pretty excited to see what they would do because, you know, it really just records in stunning quality that's great for screencasts. And, you know, they really just wanted to see what Telestream would have in store in the next version. So I really just wanted to address the updates to the program rather than the program itself and just talk about what's what's new and uh, so I have over here the change log which I'll, I'll link in the description and uh, when they put it like this it seems like a lot of features you have all of this stuff over here and I just wanted to go ahead and show you some of that stuff because it is really pretty nice and I have my uh, a little little film here that I just put together. Um, so it, it has pretty much everything that ScreenFlow 2 had, just with some additions. So uh, the first thing that I that it really jumped out at me was that if you select an audio clip, now in your audio properties dialog, you get this new, uh, some, some new options here. And the first one down here I really like, which is remove background noise. And um, this is something that I think everyone should have. I mean, I have a uh, a Blue Yeti stereo microphone, which pretty much it does a it does a really great job at capturing really high quality audio. However, um, I record on a laptop, and uh, since they're on the same surface, it still picks up a little bit of ambient vibrations uh, from the fan in the laptop. So just turning on this filter it really does cut back on some of the background noise which wasn't an option in ScreenFlow 2 and this is just a, a great feature all in itself just to have because you don't have to you know take it into another program and uh, adjust the sound quality and then re-render it out you can all just do it right in here you also have some effects too uh, I won't be using these to be quite honest with you uh, most of them are just like uh, some really uh, out there effects like uh, you know this giant echoing room and, and stuff like that um, I could see it being useful in, in some people that want like really unique creative uh, creative screencasts but for someone like me I'm honestly not going to use it um, other than that they added uh, new callouts which are freehand callouts so uh, if I go ahead and add one here and select freehand I can actually just sort of draw whatever I want to highlight and then I can adjust that in any way that I want. I could zoom it up, blur it, uh, you know, change the opacity. Uh, basically everything that you had before just now it's in a freehand brush rather than a foreground window or just where the mouse is. So that's pretty cool because you know you used to actually actually put your mouse exactly where you wanted the highlight to be and that was kind of annoying. Um, and the other thing they they are really talking about is, uh, you know, now if just say you're filling out a form and you don't want people to see your email address or something, you can actually just make a, a custom call out like that and blur that out, which uh, you can't really see very well because my background is kind of blurred itself. Uh, maybe if I put it down here, you'll see it kind of blurs it out. So that's very nice too. Uh, I'll probably be using that a, a few times. And... Uh, that's a that's a pretty nice feature there. Uh, we also have annotations, which is really great because now you can add stuff like arrows into your project, uh, and you know circle things, put a, a box around things, and these weren't available before. So having that is pretty nice as well. Uh, text is still the same, media is still the same, video, uh, screen recording, those are are pretty much the same. There are a few different. Uh, differences in the timeline down here. Uh, the first thing is that we can now kind of rearrange these tracks 
Uh, so it really gives us the freedom to put things on multiple layers. We can uh, adjust the size of them if we want to do that, uh, just for ease of use. And uh, if we go down here to the scrubber, we can actually, if we just go over here, we can insert gaps, which is very handy because you used to have to select all of the clips that were there and then hit Command Shift T, which was to split them and then move them yourself. So having that is pretty nice. Uh, you can do it the opposite way to bring them together. And now you can actually right click in between and say close gap. So those are pretty nice. Uh, definitely some handy tools. Uh, uh, like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll link to this in the description for everything that there is. Um, there's some new export settings. If I go ahead and just go to regular export, you can actually um, give yourself custom presets and you could save a bunch of different pre presets. They give you presets by default as well, including a new iPad option right there. Those are all very nice. Uh, luckily, it actually saves uh, whatever you had in ScreenFlow 2, which is great because I remember it, it took me a while to get exactly the right settings that I wanted, so at least I don't have to reprogram them in. Uh, you can now go directly to Vimeo. If you have a Vimeo account, uh, you just upload it directly there. You don't have to, you know, manually render then upload, which is nice. Um, and, and that's pretty much it. Those are all the features that I see as major additions. I'm sure there's other minor features that they added in. But those are really what I see as being significant. Um, as far as uh, upgrading goes, uh, as you can see up here, I believe it's $29. Yeah, $29, $29 from version 2, $49 from version 1. Is it worth it? I'm not so sure about that. I mean, you know, the features are great. I, I've always loved ScreenFlow. I love what they're doing it with it. I love where it's going. These features are very, very handy, and I'm going to be using them you know, as soon as possible in every screen flow that I make, in every screencast that I make. Uh, but for just the average person that just, you know, wants to play around every now and then, I wouldn't definitely say that it's worth it. Most of the features they added are just for ease of use. You can really do all of them in ScreenFlow 2.0. You just have to find some workarounds. So if you're comfortable with you know, just fr finding little tricks to doing things, then just don't even bother upgrading. You know, if you if you don't necessarily have the money laying around, it, it's not that big of an update that you just need it. Honestly, I, I think this could have been called ScreenFlow 2.1. It, it didn't need ScreenFlow 2, ScreenFlow 3. It, it's kind of a waste. Um, but yeah, it, it's a nice a, ni a nice little set of features, just not essential to everyone that's going to be screencasting so just think about that if you're going to go upgrade that and uh, i hope this has helped you in deciding whether or not you need screenflow 3.0 uh, and i'll definitely be using it in my future screencast i just you know just think it's it's not really uh that worth it so i hope you've enjoyed this video and i hope you'll subscribe see you next time